Jason Van Landingham. I uh, live in Whitesboro, Texas. Um, I guess we've been here since uh, 2005. I've been training horses since 1998. Uh, grew up in southeast Kansas. Uh, my parents uh, still are there now. They have a little steakhouse in Baxter Springs, Kansas. We went to school in Riverton and we actually lived in Galena. They're all just like right there on top of each other. Uh, had horses all the way growing up, but uh, just, just horses, you know, we just rode. Didn't know anything about uh, really training one or showing one or anything like that. Um, as kids, my brother and I, we were, we were like the local little horse trader kids. Um, people would uh, um, call us up and we'd go buy all their horses, all their tack, everything, and just anything we could do to make a little bit of money, we did it. Um, I started uh, breaking ponies whenever I was a little bitty scamp, and uh, we did uh, Christmas pony runs when we were little. So uh, we'd buy up all the ponies in the summertime and I'd get them all really, really quiet, and then we'd sell them all Christmas Eve. We'd uh, make Christmas pony deliveries and there'd be bows wrapped around their necks and Santa Claus cards and that kind of stuff. So. Um, that was that was what we did. Uh, played every sport that you can uh, do up there: baseball, football, basketball. Um, that that was our childhood. If we weren't uh, doing that, we were working at the, my parents' steakhouse, and so we stayed busy. Uh, I guess after my sophomore year in, in college, uh, my dad had bought a few mares off of a guy that was a reigning horse trainer, and and so I went to spend the summer with him. Of course, I was already married uh, uh, to Adrian, and Alexis was already already here. And so we went and spent the summer up there, planned to spend the summer up there to be able to teach our sale barn horses how to turn around fast and do those kinds of things and, and ended up staying there for a year and, and kind of got hooked on the rain in from there. I went back uh, to my parents' place there and trained out of my dad's barn for uh, about a year and he had a horse called Happy Moon Shadow. It was the first horse I ever won any money on. and. Um, uh, I took him out and, and got him trained up and took him to the Paint World Show. And uh, whenever I was showing down there, I think I ended up fourth or fifth or something like that. Uh, but Craig Johnson uh, saw me down there and, and asked me to uh, move down and go to work for him. So that must have been in 2000 that we moved to uh, Texas and kind of got our roots here now. But uh, that was the most rewarding part, I guess, uh, for me. Well, there's there's lots of things in this industry that are that are great. Uh, one, uh, being able to train horses, uh, they don't have to be ridden at a certain time during the day. So if I have one of my kids' activities that I want to go to, I can get up earlier and ride, or come back later and ride, and so I get to be there for my kids. Um, every everybody is is you know I walk out my door and I get to go to work right in my backyard, which is fantastic. Um, I get to see my kids a lot, get to see my wife a lot. Uh, they come out to the barn, they work. It's, it's kind of a family run business. So that's, that's a huge part of the business for us. That's one of the reasons that we do it. Uh, but then whenever you have one that you've had, uh, you know, all year long, and then uh, all of your expectations are up really high and they come and meet those expectations and maybe even go beyond those expectations, that's a pretty rewarding deal as well. Um, I love having the conversations with owners after you've had a really successful run. Uh, after you've had a really bad run, you hate that conversation, you hate to pick up the phone call. So there's, there's definitely highs and lows in the business and uh, you can go from uh, winning the Futurity to not making the finals the next year and you see that happen a lot. So, um, I mean, it's a roller coaster ride, but you know, just as far as the showing part of it, obviously, whenever you get to that winner's circle, it's a, it's a pretty rewarding deal. You, uh, I guess your, your goals have been met for that year. So. Uh, uh, but then you're also reminded whenever you get back home that there's a barn full of young ones to get rolling again and, and you got to go do it again the next year. Like I said, ever since I was little I rode. Um, I had plans of, uh, you know, being a professional baseball player and doing those kinds of things and, and went to college to play baseball, but uh, family got started a little early for me. Alexis was coming and, and uh, whenever she was born, um, that was the end of baseball. You know, that's a, in my mind, a single man's game, and you can't be around your uh, uh, family whenever you're on the road playing ball all the time. And so I shut that down. And, um, you know, it was what I knew. It was kind of what I, I grew up doing. And so I was j just as a way to, to make ends meet, I was riding Colts and working at my parents' steakhouse while I was going to college and, and uh, staying pretty busy that way. And uh, once we, we got uh, in contact with, with Eber Christopher, the guy I was telling you about that uh, I learned my basics from, uh, went and watched a horse show. And like all the competitive juices from back whenever you're a kid playing sports just start flowing again. You're like, man, I can do this. And um, you know, I love to compete. I, I love to, uh, uh, you know, 
to go out and work hard at something and, and accomplish something, you know, and, and, and be at the top. Uh, that's uh, something that um, it, it's just very uh, gratifying. And so uh, whenever I found a way that I could still compete but still spend time with my family, it just seemed like the perfect fit. And I love horses, so it just seemed like it was a, a natural thing to go into. So.